All right, I'm Matt. And I'm Rabia. And this is Sound Like Upon Anderson's Television. Hi, Rabia. Hey, man, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Are you excited about this one? I am indeed. Good. Who, what are we doing today? Well, I'm not going to turn my back on this episode. Oh! Basically, what we're doing today is uh, choosing our favourite gear f uh, in the classic rock realm. It's the ultimate classic rock challenge. That is. And we basically, over the years of doing Sound Like Now, we can say that. It's been many years. Um, we've done a lot of classic rock artists, and so we thought, why don't we compile a rig each using the gear that we found most enjoyable to use? We've done uh, similar, similar, um, similar episodes. But we not, did the ultimate not, sound like rig. We did. We've done lots of stuff like that. So this is classic rock focus. Yeah, so fifteen hundred pound budget. Two rigs. Guitars, each. amps, pedals. All the fun. All the good times. Let's go. Let's do it. I'd ID who. We're going to choose guitars. Yes. Yeah, so, so I think as a concept here, you could arguably go one, the Les Paul Marshall angle. Okay. So like your Jimmy Page or Slash type vibe. And then another go Telly and Fender. Interesting. Something in that vein, you know, just to kind of, it mimics one of my favorite bands ever. However, I'd say it's arguably a decent I blend, think it's a good concept. Uh, blend of classic rock. And then, because we, we're covering a lot of ground, totally. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, I'll go Gibson Marshall then, why not? Well, I'll go Telly and Fender. In which case, we're, we're here, so we may as well start well, here. Let's, you, you choose a guitar, young man. Yeah, well, it's worth saying that... <laughs> as if you would come in here and do that immediately. <laughs> you and your leather jacket. <laughs> there he is, look. <laughs> He's just like a naughty school kid. So, seeing as we're in where Gibsons and Epiphones and things like that are, I've always really enjoyed um, when Epiphone do the one with the uh, Alnico vintage voice. Oh yeah, they're really, really good. Okay. Um, but I also really enjoy, oh, we can't do it anymore. Due to inflation, we used to be able to get uh, like a Les Paul or an SG for about 600 quid. Yeah, there was about Do you remember, a couple of years ago? Yeah, yeah. But we can't do that anymore. So, um, yeah, basically. But there's a thought actually, should we increase the budget due to inflation? I don't think so. Anyway. Um, so what I want, so there you go, look, see, the Pro uh, Alnico Classic by Epiphone. These are the vintage humbucking pickups. Now you can get these in a lot of Epiphone guitars and they're really good. And I just think they sound great um, with whatever guitar they come in. So I, I suppose that's important because it's the sound, more so than the, the way the guitar looks as such. So it's just kind of worth finding one with those pickups in. Now you could go Les Paul Custom Vibes <laughs> like this. Because Les Paul customs are great. What are you thinking then? What are you thinking? Well, you I, thinking just, I want the Alnico um, vintage humbucking pickups. Those pickups and I like this because it's beautiful. Oh, that is it's really a Bonamassa nice. Epiphone. Uh, is it, is it's it, a signature. Is it a SIG? Yeah, it, it is. is a SIG. So it's Bonamassa. It's got Bonamassa. Um, right? Yeah, so in which case, I think the best bet for me is probably this Les Paul custom. Oh, so there Les, you go. Les Paul custom. That's a lovely piece Reminiscent of, work. of Justin Hawkins, who I'm a huge fan of as well, you know, from there the diners back in gear. And it's a good guitar, you know? These things are solid. I like Les Paul Customs. It's coil tapping as well, so, yeah, so yeah, you're gonna get a lot of turns. But it, most importantly, has the pickups. This is my guitar. Right, well, I'll go and find a guitar too. Okay, I'm in the land of Telecasters by Fender, and there are a bunch in different price brackets. This is beautiful here. 1,500 pounds, a little too much for my budget right now. However, I just found, what was that? It's, it's a collision of diff, two different universes. It is, it's almost like a something parallel universe. And the thing is, it's 1,500 quid, so you can't use it. Too much. This guy here, I've just spotted, you know, maple board, nice unbound telly and a sunburst, 529. We're about the same for this and that, same yeah, money. Yeah, so that leaves us enough for, you know, amps, pedals, all that delights. But I'm, th I'm, feeling, I'm feeling like a telly's my way to go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with this. I'm actually walking down to find the Marshall gear because I wanted to get Marshall uh, Origin. Uh, because as we've used in the past, Marshall Origins are their kind of classic t uh, voiced Marshall amplifier for an affordable price. They are pretty so affordable. This is a 50 watt and we've used the 20 watt is the one we normally go for, which I don't see here, um, which is slightly annoying just because 
20 watt one is way more affordable than the 50 watt. So the 20 watt's 499, so that would have left me around 500 pounds for pedals. Uh, and yeah. there's one here apparently, so we're all <laughs> News good. <just> in. <laughs> News just in. There's one here, so we'll get it out of the back. Uh, so that's me at 1,029 pounds. Beautiful. Actually, 1,028 pounds because this is 529. If you've gone Marshall, I'm going to go Fender. Okay. I was tempted by the Katana, but I feel like I should go more specific. I've been thinking about an amp. I was a bit torn between the Bass Breaker and the Hot Rod Deluxe, but that's a very fetching colour as well. I've decided, not based on the colour, to go for the Hot Rod Deluxe just because I feel it's a little bit more classic than the bass breaker. The bass breaker would probably get me somewhere pretty close, but it's a bit more of a modern amp, so I'm gonna keep it, keep it old school and go for the Hot Rod Deluxe. So I've got 500 pounds left of my budget to get my pedals. Now, they have to be pedals that we have used in previous uh, sound like episodes where we've done a classic rock artist. Yeah, or at least something similar in yeah, the same vein. Yeah, close too, because, you know, that's the point. So, with that in mind, I mean, you wanted, you were talking about Echo Plex and G7. I've been talking about the Echo Plex and G7. I think it's a master combo with it the is. hot rod. And I think with the telly, I'm going to be sorted. So that kind of screws me out of my plan. But you've got a lot more money left than I do. I okay. think I'm about out of budget. So, MXR Microamp is a great the show. Microamp's a great show. Because we have used that in and classic we, rock rigs. And we were debating whether the 80s counts as classic rock. j Rad Archer which we have used. Fine. That's about 179, I think, you, round if, that kind of money. if you were considering so not, the 80s, right? Yeah. Which, again, I definitely consider. I, would, I don't say 80s is classic Taking rock. you from Led Zeppelin to Guns N' Roses through 70s and 80s, I think you've got, it's a shout. Just my I opinion. think it's its own thing. The 80s is its own thing, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna get the J Red Archer. Because, by J-Rocket, because we've used that on plenty we of classic rock. We used that a lot, especially um, early on, we used that a lot, a lot. Yeah. It's not the most affordable of Klon replicas, but uh, tried and tested sounds good. What else could I possibly use for like a classic rock sound? I might get a fuzz, because Black Sabbath counts as a uh, classic Black rock. Black Sabbath does, yes. It's not from the 80s, therefore it's okay. classic rock. In which case, I'm going to get the... Oh, it's not here. Oh no, I was going to get the Sabra Cadabra by Kaylin Bread because oh, that's great just great, metal. but it's not here. Damn it! There is, there are similar things though for that Sabra. Yeah, sound. I might look out back if I if I can find it out back. I will get the Kaylin Bread Sabra Cadabra. Sabra Cadabra. Um, if not, I will get another type that's of cool, fuzz, yeah. and I'm going to get the Vox 845Wa as well. So I'm going to get a, we just decided that you we need a TS Mini. Absolutely, get a tube screamer right? because that's that's a staple pedal in the classic rock world. Um, I agree. I so agree. probably the TS Mini because it's a bit more affordable. Because this is about 180, and then the 845 is about You're 70. You're going to go with that and a tube screamer. Yeah, two, the, two very different things. Yeah. Uh, and then that's about 70 pounds. <laughs> and then uh, I've got the Sabra Cadabra, and then that leaves me just because that's we're talking still like 250 pounds left yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm just going to finish it off with the um, TS Mini. What about you? Well, I've gone for my Telecaster, I've got my Hot Rod Deluxe, and I also have the GE7 by Boss and the Echoplex preamp. So mine's kind of, I'm going for the kind of archetypal rhythm guitar tone. Okay. Um, and I think we'll get there. Let's I'm, see I'm confident. how it sounds. We're back in the video room. Yes, in this quest to find our ultimate classic rock rigs. And you know what, Matt? I think we found it. Do you know what? I think we did. I think there's a good combo between rhythm and lead. I think there's... This could have been lots of fictional bands I was gonna say, that didn't exist. It could. And also, it's speculative as to what is the best gear for classic rock. But in terms of what we've used over the years, except for one pedal that I will um, 
I'll caveat that in a moment. Um, we found a really good sound from what, with, what, with what we've got. What we've got. And it sounds very good. Yeah, it sounds great. And what we wanted to do is just split it, like I say, into kind of a rhythm and lead thing, just to give you two different variations on a theme. Yes. It's also worth pointing out that we decided we'd just try make up some inspired by classic rock riffs. Yes. So, um, you know, let us know who you think they sound like. Yeah. Um, we, we had some little some little flavours to throw in there. The we literally stir-fry. just made them up on the spot. We're like, yeah, that sounds classic rock. Let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs> start with the guitar. This is an Epiphone and this is the Custom Pro. It's the Epiphone Les Paul Custom Pro. Um, it's based on a Les Paul Custom, as you can see. Um, reminds me a lot of the um, Justin Hawkins one. Really like well, yeah, I think we used it in that, um, we did. that episode. Yeah, sound yeah. like the darkness from back yeah, in the day. Yeah, we did say as well in the store that we're trying to find gear that we've used over the years. You in know, different episodes. That we like particularly. Um, yeah. The reason I chose it was the, the pickups because these are the Alnico uh, vintage humbucking pickups. They, they're kind of, they've got that lower output vintage voice to them, which is the main reason for getting it. Um, I'm running into the TS Mini by Ibanez, which we've used before. We've also used the normal tube screamer before. It does the job. Running everything, except level is pushed to three quarters, but everything else on halfway. Now, I wanted the Sabra Cadabra by Caitlin Brett. Yes, which gets a particular sound by a certain band you might remember. Yes, uh, but instead well, they didn't have any, so we've got the Fallout Cloud by Thorpe Effects. Is that the name? Yes, it is. That's a really good name. It is, and also this has got very high praise from many people. Thorpe do some awesome pedals, such as the Dane. Um, but the Fallout Cloud is a fuzz that has, it was in top 50 best pedals of last year, I think it was, right. like, num- like somewhere high up. This year, sorry, it was somewhere somewhere high up. So that's really cool. And, and to be and fair, it's in the, this new smaller casing, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a bit more compact. And it sounds great. It's like a germanium fuzz type thing going on, and I like germanium fuzz. Out of that, into the J Rad Archer by J Rocket, and I think it, we, well, we've used it before. It's clone we, clone. We've definitely used that a lot. So, and I think you're about. I mean, you haven't talked about your amp yet, but no. you're about under budget. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With the, with everything, I'm still just scraping around fifteen hundred quid. Out of the Jared Archer into the Vox 845 wah. Unless we forget. Um, which is down on the ground. And that again is a really affordable wah. And then out of that, into the Marshall Origin 20 with my mobile phone sat on top, which I will move. Um, it's the Origin 20 and we've used it. It's relatively I mean, recent. It's a relatively new amp, isn't it? So we've used it a couple of times. Yeah, you've got a three band EQ. There's a tilt control, which I've taken off. Tilt? Um, yes. What does that do? Uh, it tilts the amp, so oh, as nice. you as you turn it up, the whole thing sort of goes sideways. So you can like hear this. it better, like yeah, a yeah, monitor. Yeah, yeah. If you clever. if you turn it up far enough, it gets into Dutch territory. I which thought is it really flipped completely over. Yeah. If you turn it all the way around, and that gives me this sound. <laughs> So it's really clean. I was going to say that actually, it's very, very clean. Mm. And I think something that's been common in all these videos that we've done over over years is that we'll take a relatively clean amp with, you know, an amp that has enough headroom, Mm. um, nice guitar, and then your kind of clons or your tube screamers or your EQs or your echo plexes, Mm. I feel all do... Just drive it. Yeah, they all provide a bit of a push. Even though Um, the amp's got gain for days, it's more about finding those tastes and colours from different pedals. Yeah, I um, think when you're on a budget, it's a really, really cool thing to look out for, mm. um, to add that little, you know, 100, 200 quid here, but it really makes a difference to your rig. Hugely. So that's the sound of it straight in. Now, if I throw on the Tube Screamer. Mm. 
Which does a great job, and it is ever slightly out of tune. But Tube Screamer works really well. Now, what I had done is teamed up the Tube Screamer with the Archer, and the fuzz was in the middle, because you don't really... I mean, you can go for it with all three, but it's way too much. So I'll do the Archer next. So without. With. Tube Screamer on top. Anyway, oh. the point is that there's loads of gain, there's no low, no low end, loads of mids, so for a lead boost, it would really work well for that. Um, but for me, when you turn the fuzz on... Which is sick. <laughs> if you throw the tube screamer in to push well. it a bit more. <laughs> really great. And then, yeah, that's full on. It is. I mean, it, I mean, at the very top there, you're probably not thinking that sounds like Lyndon Skinner. No, but. no. Um, and then one last thing is the 845. So I'll throw on some J-Rad. And... I do that with every wild <laughs> pedal, no, always. Every time. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> With the tubes. So there you go. That is the rig, and I really like it. I think for a budget of 1,500 pounds, there's loads of colors there, loads of different vibes. Physically loads of colors. It's a very colorful rig. But there are um, loads of different vibes there are. and influences in there. So, you know, in a range of bands and sounds from that er from those eras, you can kind of achieve that with a bit of what I found. So, Right, me next. So this is a Fender Mexican Telecaster. Um, Three-tone sunburst, maple neck, maple fretboard, this lovely white pit guard, and some classic Tele single coils. You can't really go wrong with the Tele. You can't, this is clocking over just over 500 quid. That's what I mean, the, and, um, sorry, that's what I meant, the price for what you get. Like that would see a player through many a year of in his career, I think. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think so. Um, that runs direct into the MXR, this is the Echoplex preamp. It's a um, fantastic pedal. We use that is, so many times. Which is fantastic, as you say. Um, straight into the Boss GE7 EQ. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we've used many, many times. Um, and back here, I have the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. The trusty old Hot Rod Deluxe. Yeah, again, it's, it's had its fair share of outings with Sound Like. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a little rundown of what it sounds like. <laughs> Cool. Uh, to be fair, the G7's one of those 
variable pedals because you can literally what I decided I'd do is take out some low end and some mid yeah. and it goes from being really barky and mid range like a telly would and then you pull it out and then you get all that jangle yeah. with the high end and stuff but what I really really like about this rig is that you can go for something that's a bit more like or you can just roll the volume off and get it I, yeah, to be fair, anyway. the cool thing about tellies, well, this rig in particular is, you can thicken it right up by driving the front end with the echo, but then, because it's single coils, when you roll it off... Well, you can use these EQs as well for, like, if you crank the, the level, just use it as a solo boost or whatever you want. Yeah. Um, so it's super, super versatile. Obviously, the amp can do loads more. This is just a setting. So, um, yeah, I'm well happy with it. Well happy. And to be fair, I think you're, actually, no, you're probably close to budget too, aren't you? 50, 150, so unfortunately slid over there, but I think it's worth it. And it's, I was going to say, it's fair to say that these are very different rigs for the same amount of price. Oh, totally, totally different. But I think, again, like I keep banging on about, I just, it's something that's really complimentary, you know. This is a bit more thin and really good for kind of the chugging away and mm. playing some nice open chords. And then you've got probably more of a like a lead. Yeah, the gain and the sustain and yeah, all exactly. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That was ultimate classic rock rig. Uh, so we're not sounding like an artist as such in this episode, but it was just a, a bit of gear inspiration for you guys that are out there looking for rigs and you like classic rock or playing this classic rock style band. There you go. This might help you. There's a lot of gear out there, but hopefully this helps you kind of find a little bit of direction yeah. um, if you're struggling. So um, we hope you like the video. Let us know who else you'd like us to sound like or what else you'd like us to cover and we'd be happy to oblige yes we'll put links in the description box below for all the gear uh yeah and i've been rabir and i've been matt this has been sound like on anderton's tv see you later <laughs>